In the last video, we talked about Catfish by SocialCatfish.com and Sally. The team was so nice and careful with her emotions, but still, they wanted to uncover this Marcelo identity for the sake of everyone involved. They were very respectful and professional, as in every video that I've seen from them. Hence why this particular one made me very intrigued. The team saw themselves in the necessity of putting a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, detaching their morals and ideology from the victim. Interesting. This remind me of Kay, the woman that went to Dr. Phil asking to see her boyfriend that turned out to be a scammer. In the entire two hours, we could see, sure, a victim of fraud, but a horrible human being as well, treating everyone around that loves her and took care of her like crap. Victims can be assholes too. We are about to watch how ego can morph reality and blind the person in the process. As in every video, the links are going to be in the description so you can check them out unadulterated by my opinion. And don't forget to subscribe and give the video a like, it really helps. This is Mary Lee, a 55-year-old dental assistant twice divorced and currently married to her third husband. I have a husband, I like him, but I don't like him that much. I mean, he's a great guy and everything like that, but just that, uh, eh, you know, eh, the fire's gone, or whatever you want to call it, the passion. It's just like, eh, it's a roommate. She is so dismissive towards her husband, it's shocking. Mary recounts how at the beginning of the relationship, she liked him. He was fine. But that's not really what you say about your significant other that you love, right? Enough to get married? So I dated him for seven years before he decided, hey, well, let's get married because he promised me safety, security, financial security. He cares a lot about me, and I seem to come first in his life. That was a good deal for me. I'm thinking, hey, this is a win-win. I don't have to worry about money. I can get whatever I want. Yeah, I can do this. Well, four years later, I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> Basically, she married out of convenience. It's as if this, her marriage, is a job to her. You kind of wonder and understand why she has two divorces on her resume. Well, after four years of her husband bending time and space for her, she was bored of him, so she took it upon herself to look around and see if someone better appeared. Introducing Benedict. She met him on Facebook when she saw a friend request from him. They started talking on WhatsApp and they will talk on the phone as well. Mary was very interesting because sure, the guy in the picture is very attractive, but she saw something else. Benedict was allegedly a well-established stock manager, so a guy with money, another man that could take care of her while doing the bare minimum. After a few conversations, Benedict professed his love for her, which she rejected because Mary knew it was way too soon to be feeling this sort of emotion about a stranger. She also noticed something interesting about Benedict. He's allegedly from Chicago, but Mary says his accent was more geared towards Antonio Landeras, a Spanish actor. I do like talking to him a lot. I mean, he likes how straightforward I am and this and that, and I don't beat around the bush. She makes me laugh. I make him laugh. And that Rico Suave voice, man, woo, tell you what. <laughs> the guy said all the right things to her. Benedict boosted her ego and slowly pushed the idea of him being open to giving her everything she needed. For example, giving hints of her quitting her job, buying a lake house, and even buying her an engagement ring. Remember, Mary is still married. She was demonstrably emotionally cheating on her husband, and I don't think she's even sorry about it. Mary, for obvious reasons, didn't talk about it to her family, but she did tell her co-workers about Benedict, to which they all replied, he's a scammer. But why a scammer and not a catfish? Then he hits me up because I was wondering if you could do something for me. I'm like, like what? Well, do you think you can like get me a gift card? I go, a gift card? I go, what the hell you want with that? I said, you don't ask me for money. I go, only people I give money to is my son. So one day I said, hey, if I give you a $50 gift card, will you just back off of me? Because I said, I've about had enough of this, you know, bullshit, you know? And it begins. She tries and plays it cool, saying she won't give him any money. My guess is after Mary said that, Benedict stopped talking to her and because she was hooked on the ego boosting he was giving her, she gave in. But the plot thickens. My husband decided he's gonna kick me out. I said, what? Because he found 
the conversation with this guy. So I pack up my things and I go stay with my sister for a while. Good on the husband for kicking her out. Hopefully, there's a prenup. While Mary was having plans on going to Chicago to see Benedict and maybe start a life with him, the husband was quickly forgetting about what happened and asked Mary to come back to the house with him. Bummer. Mary accepted because, shocker, Benedict moved and he was no longer in Chicago but in Seattle. So I stayed with my sister for like three months until my husband kept calling and telling me he was sorry. I need you back here because I miss you and I could work this out and all that stuff. And so after I got back home, you know, I didn't talk to that guy for a long, long time. I don't know if you noticed how Mary was telling about her husband wanting her back as if it was obviously going to happen, which shows me that this could not be the first time this happened. Well, she was homeless, so she returned home and stopped any communication with Benedict. Until he sent me a $5,000 money order check. I never cashed it. I just told him, hey, look, I got this. Fake as hell. I'm not doing it. You know, I said, I'm not going to jail. But then a few days after I got that, he sends me flowers here at my office. That's great and all, but no more gift cards. I said, I'm not doing it. Listen, Mary is saying all these things that show to the public how she was an unwilling participant, but Benedict was still interested in her. I doubt that a scammer will waste their time on someone who's not budging. They will immediately drop the victim and on to the other. I sent him one last month. I don't know why I did that. I don't know. Maybe I was just feeling generous. See? Mary was in on all of this from the beginning. Now she knows it's all a scam, so she's trying to play cool with the rest of the people hearing the story. Well, my husband is retired now. Yes, he does take care of all the bills. He pays for everything. I pay for my vehicle and my bills. That's how we, uh, you know, manage our finances. His money is her money and her money is her money. Got it. The husband told her she can stay and have the same weird relationship they have or leave with Benedict and never come back. She was thinking it because it will mean she has to work five days a week to support herself if she decided to leave. But he's, he's okay, but he's not okay with it. Just, I can leave anytime I want. That's about it. I know he loves me and I don't feel that way about him and he knows it. I don't like the way he looks. He just, he looks like an old mountain goat. I think, God, cut your hair, trim your beard, something. I don't know. I just want to be happy. And it's hard to be happy with my husband just sitting there like some beached whale with a bunch of hair and not doing a goddamn thing. It makes me really difficult to not talk about her looks because I'm pissed on her husband's behalf. But this right here shows how ego can truly deform the perceptions of oneself. Her demeanor is like that meme. How do you do, fellow kids? What? She didn't show the entire conversations with Benedict, but according to the Catfish team, he kept insisting on her buying gift cards. Which makes me think, what did she really like about him, as in the conversation? Why was she hooked on him if the only thing they would talk is about money? But shocking revelations. After the team sent Benedict a link to a gift card, they were able to track his IP to Lagos, Nigeria. The scammer, now understanding how Mary needs attention to receive cash, apologized to her and explained he was not Benedict, then sent a picture of someone else and told her he's still interested in the relationship. He turned out to be 22, by the way. Not only that, she casually confessed to the team how she's talking to more guys on Facebook and how inconvenient it is to hide her conversations with this man from her husband. So Mary's cheating on her husband with more dudes and she's annoyed that her husband doesn't trust her. The nerve on this woman. Also, she mentioned she wants a divorce, but these are expensive and she's there not to be homeless. So probably she's looking for another victim. You know, husband number four. Three to four years ago, I had an affair with um, with a person we both know. And I've always gotten along with this guy and everything like that. You know, he found out. And so, yeah, I was a little uncomfortable and stuff like that. So I tried to work out things with my husband. And me and that other guy, we never talked again. 
See, I told you, this woman is exhausting. I feel for the team that had to talk to her compassionately and not judge her character right there. Mary's marriage became unbearable because her husband was unable to trust her again. You can see how everything went down with fake names and fake addresses in the original video, but I can tell you Mary didn't have her happy ending. It's very interesting how from the very beginning she's sabotaging herself. Either she's afraid of intimacy, as in falling in love, or she is in love with herself and nobody can match that energy, so she uses people while they allow her. I sincerely hope she goes to therapy because she still has a lot to live and she should give herself a chance to know what happiness and love feel like. I also hope she apologizes to everyone who suffer because of her actions. It's the least she can do. Before you leave, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't and tell me why in the comments. And now that you're here, subscribe to the channel, you are more than welcome here. Thank you for watching.